This is the Stormfire from Wicked Technologies, a new stove with some very unique features. If you're interested in hearing more, keep watching. All right, before I begin, I would just like to thank Wicked Technologies for sending me the Stormfire so that I could share it with you. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the stove's key features. I'll go over its specifications. I'll go over how it can be used with a variety of fuels. And then finally, I'll compare it with the FlexFire 4 and the LightFire, two other stoves from Wicked Technologies. Before we take a closer look at the Stormfire, there's just a couple of things that I want to mention. To begin, uh, Wicked Technologies is about to launch a Kickstarter campaign in advance of the sales of the Stormfire. And the stove that they sent me is a pre-production model that allowed me to do some testing and provide some feedback to them. But of course, I will be providing a link to the Kickstarter campaign in the video description below. You may want to go over to the Kickstarter site at Take a look at the campaign, register for it, and then you'll be able to take advantage of any early bird deals that are offered. And uh, I think you'll find that there's, there's a lot to consider with this stove. And the other thing that I want to mention is, is because this is a pre-production model, there may be some slight variations between what I show you on this stove and what you receive should you decide to purchase one for yourself. All right, let's take a closer look at some of the key features of the stove, and then I'll go into its specific specifications. So to begin, this stove, like the others from Wicca Technologies, is made entirely in Germany and it uses a pro proprietary stainless steel titanium alloy and that gives you the best of both worlds in terms of strength and weight uh, and also uh, heat conduction. It is designed from the ground up to be a multi-fuel stove used primarily of course with wood but then of course wood pellets alcohol, gas or butane, solid fuel, and charcoal. Unique to this stove, at least on any stove that I have seen, is they include what's a feed port cover that drops into place to cover the feed port over. And what that does is a couple of things. First off, it protects the stove when being used with an alcohol burner from wind or, or any other harsh conditions that would negatively impact uh, its use. The other thing it does is it greatly en enhances airflow so that it works more like a chimney drawing air up through the bottom and gives you a much more efficient burn. You're not losing any heat out through the feed port that you might otherwise. And I find that actually very effective for that. Let me just remove that for a second and go on to the next key feature. So also different on this stove are the pot supports. Now what makes them different is they're just a little bit different in size to begin with. They're a little bit shorter than the others and a little bit, a little bit wider in this direction. And they have extra slots on them that allow you to do a couple of things. First off, you can vary the standoff height at the top of the stove. So I have it standing right now at its highest, but I can flip that over and drop the height down if I want to get closer to the top of the stove. And that's ideal for use with an alcohol burner, again, to prevent any heat loss or, or any drafts from robbing heat away. So that's one of their uses. Uh, another one of their uses is to raise up the ash pan. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, this this stove is designed a little different from any of the other stoves from Wicked Technology in that the free floating ash pan on the bottom can actually be lifted to the bottom so that it comes in very close contact with the fire grate underneath, thereby restricting airflow from entering in underneath and moving up through, through the fuel. So why would you want to do that? Well, if you can slow down the airflow, you'll slow down the combustion. If you slow down the combustion, you also enhance not only the length of time your fuel will last, but you will reduce the heat to some degree and you will encourage the formation embers and coals, which are, of course are better for cooking over especially if you're grilling. So in order to lift that ash pan up using the pot supports, I would recommend you do this before you begin your fire. Having said that though, I have done that while the stove was in use and it does work quite effectively for that, but it just requires a little bit more caution. So you begin by taking one of your pot supports, sliding it underneath the ash pan and rotating it into position and it will uh, rest in some small slots at the base of the sides of the panels. And once the, those are in position, you can see just how much it's lifted the ash pan. So there is a very 
minimal amount of air entering in on each side. So just before I provide you with the physical specifications for the Stormfire, there's one more feature that I want to draw your attention to. That is on the side, you'll notice that there are a variety of slots uh, milled into the panels. And at the bottom, you can see where the ash pan is. This is where the fire grate is, but then there's two additional slots as opposed to one additional slot that you'll find on either the flex fire four or the light fire. That additional slot provides you at least one more option for use with the optional uh, plates that you can uh, put in the stove. And I'll demonstrate that of course. And you can of course move the ash pan up or down if you want to use it, we'll say for uh, solid fuel. And you can move the fire grate into those different positions. You may decide to do that if you want to use a tranja or other alcohol stove with it. And again, I'll demonstrate those in a few moments. Also, before I give you the specifications, I just want to mention that this stove is very close in most of its dimensions to the Flex Fire 4 and the Light Fire, and that is quite intentional so that they can share some of their components between each other, and I'll demonstrate that as well. So what is, let's go over its specifications. So the height of the stove from the ground to the top is 5.9 inches or 15 centimeters. Its width from the outside of the tabs is 4.25 centimeters or 10 0.8 inches. It has a burn, burn chamber dimensions of 4 inches in depth and 3 inches in width, which would be 10 centimeters by 7.6 centimeters. And the overall weight for everything that you see here, including these two components, the fuel port cover and the pot supports, is 17.9 ounces or 500 grams, so just over one pound. All right, I mentioned that you can use some of the other plates that that come for that are available for the other stoves which is with it so why don't I show you those now so to begin one plate that you may want to choose to get is the pellet plate this is a great accessory and uh, aids in the uh, use of pellets with this stove and what's nice using the it, this the pellet grate with the storm fire is that you get options on how high you want to set it so if you only want to use a small amount of pellets for a quick boil up, then you can do so by having it uh, inserted at the top slot. Now, one thing that made that a challenge with the other two stoves, of course, is that, of course, is that the fuel port cover provided a place for wood pellets to come out. And there was a trick for maximizing their use and minimizing pellets coming out. But with this stove, you don't have to worry about pellets falling out because once you've got the pellet plate installed, you can drop the fuel port cover on not only preventing pellets from dropping out, but also again, forcing the combustion to come straight up through, no heat loss out through the fuel port and everything is directed to the bottom of whatever vessel that you are using. So that's one accessory you may wanna consider. Another accessory is the very useful Trangia plate. So this plate can be designed to be dropped in to one of the slots on the sides and give you the uh, uh, ability to adjust the depth or the pot gap from the top of the Trangia to the bottom of your pot. That along with the different heights that the, the pot, pot supports provide you give you quite a degree of variability. Now, you don't have to use this to, to use the Trangia. You can use just the regular fire grate and bring it up to the right position. And again, decide exactly well, how much of a gap you want between the, the top of the Trangia and the bottom of your pot. But uh, quite often it's the center set of slots that you'll uh, put this that plate in and then put your Trangia on. Again, you'll find that it's much more efficient if you then drop the fuel port cover over the top, set the pot support so that they are as low as they can go on either side, and the stove is designed, as I mentioned, to be a maximum efficient with or for an alcohol stove, so it cuts down on any heat loss due to uh, crosswinds over it. So, all right, so this was just meant to be a short introductory video to the Stormfire of, from Wicked Technologies so that I could bring it to you in advance of the Kickstarter, which is about to launch. Again, the link to the Kickstarter will be in the video description. And in the future date, I'll ha have the stove out in the woods where I'll, I'll demonstrate it better with each of the fuels that I mentioned for it. Okay, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions or comments on the stove, please put them in the comments section below. Otherwise, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.